Just 500 kilometers away from the bustling city of Tokyo lies the former imperial capital, Kyoto. In Kyoto, history comes alive as geisha glide through cobblestone alleys and tea masters blend tradition and artistry in every cup. Join me on this 20-minute adventure as I explore Kyoto, from the majestic temples of Kiyomizu-dera to the ethereal Arashiyama bamboo grove. My exploration begins with the iconic Fushimi Inari Shrine. After a short train ride, make your way for the busy food market. I personally wouldn't advise you to buy any food here, and my experience both the coffee and the buns were so-so, um, and if you take your drinks or food to go, you'll have the hardest time disposing of the trash, as there are no trash bins in Japan, and Kyoto is no exception. So uh, no food is allowed on temple premises, and we were kind of in a pickle. As you enter the shrine grounds, you'll be welcomed by stone fox statues. The messenger of the god Inari is a fox, a miraculous fox, it's called Kitsune. And uh, you can see the fox in many places. It is believed that the fox, Kitsune, she likes certain snacks. One of them is udon noodles and the other one is deep fried tofu. So if you're here, it is believed very auspicious to enjoy this specific snacks just for extra luck. Finally, you, together with thousands of other people, embark on a mesmerizing journey along the Thousand Tori Gates. It's like stepping into a fairy tale or a movie set. The pathway of Red Gate stretches for miles up to the sacred Mount Inari. Inari is the god of rice and prosperity, and it attracts millions of visitors each year who come to seek its blessing. Along the way, you'll encounter smaller shrines and various blocks representing the gratitude of individuals and businesses who have been blessed by Inari's divine protection. Inari is the god that brings fortune and business, and everyone who wants to be super lucky in business to have prosperity in whatever they're doing, they're coming here making donations. And if you really want to have success, then you buy one of those Tory gates. It is said that there are 1,000 Tory gates donated by individuals and businesses to get luck in their uh, businesses, but in reality, it's more like tens of thousands of Tory gates that are scattered here on the pathway and along the mountains. You can go to the top of the mountain um, in 40 minutes from the shrine, but we have decided against it because we have a train to catch. And honestly, I don't want to sweat before going on a train. So we'll head back. I think it's just more Tory gates over Tory gates and we've already seen it. A visit to Kyoto wouldn't be complete without discovering the art of tea. Kyoto's historical connection with the tea ceremony dates back to the 16th century, when the influential tea master Sen no Rikyu refined and popularized the practice. Nowadays, you have the opportunity to participate in tea ceremonies at a traditional ochaya or tea house. Besides wearing a beautiful forend kimono and learning how to brew matcha, you can gain a deeper understanding into the Japanese concept of Ichigo, Ichien. This translates to one moment, one encounter, where each tea ceremony is considered a unique and irreplaceable moment in time. The tea ceremony was surprisingly very short, so we dressed up for 30 minutes, then we took some photos. But the tea ceremony, like the pouring and the making, it was maybe 10 minutes. Nevertheless, I do recommend this place, and if you visit, obviously, try to aim for the Maiko and the Geisha experience. Uh, I've been uh, going on the hallways a little bit and listening to the other rooms, and I find that the story that the Geisha and Maiko tell is really interesting. And getting this uh, first-hand interaction with the Geisha is something that probably you'll treasure a lot.
It's almost 5 p.m. and this is our second meal for the day. I couldn't wait until we get a sit down proper meal at a restaurant, so we went for some street food. This is takoyaki, dough based uh, balls, uh, doused with sauce, um, something like mayonnaise, and then a barbecue sauce. And the thing on top, this is bonito flakes, but the surprise really lies inside because there you have octopus, baby octopus. Taste wise, um, it's salty. It's a little bit sour, it's a little bit sweet, and it has the umami flavor, uh, thanks to the bonito flakes on, on top, and because of the octopus inside. Mm. Next, we immerse ourselves in the ethereal world of the Arashiyama bamboo grove. The sphere dense forest lets only a few rays of sun filter through, and when the wind blows, you can hear the stems rustling and squeaking as they bend in the breeze. The bamboos here are truly immense. Their tops reach over 50 meters into the sky. But it's not possible to get lost in the grove, as visitors must stay on the paved pathway. Strolling through the bamboo forest will cost you nothing, but it gets very crowded very fast. So, for those who prefer a serene and magical atmosphere, I recommend getting here as early as 7 or 8 a.m. Do you remember the movie Memoirs with a Geisha when she drives in a car in this amazing bamboo grove? Well, this is it. We are in the bamboo grove. The only difference is it's a lot of people here, it's a lot of crowds, and it's really difficult to take a good photo or a video. We had to walk two times until we got our shots right, and obviously everybody is competing for space. But aside from that, the forest does have a very serene feeling, and I think for many people this is really the highlight of their trip to Arashiyama. <laughs> Near the bamboo grove is the Tenryuji Temple Complex. It's one of the five most important Zen temples in Kyoto. It was built in the 14th century by the Zen monk Muso Suseki. Suseki founded many other temples in Japan and is well known for his influence on Zen garden design, including the garden at Tenryuji. In my opinion, while Tenryuji has a great landscape garden with a central pond, I actually found another park that I believe is much more beautiful here in Arashiyama, but I'll tell you a bit later about that. Instead, if you come to Tenryuji, visit the inner parts of the temple, which consist of the main hall, the meditation hall, drawing room, and the cloud dragon hall. A special note has to be dedicated to the Japanese law for gardens and everything green. Japanese people have the smallest apartments, and that's why outdoor public spaces play such an important role. Japanese come here to relax and unwind, and parks are kept to a very high standard. It's not unlikely to see gardeners pruning trees, manicuring the lawns, and taking care of the flowers. We stumbled into the Okoshi Sansa garden by accident. It's a little bit off the beaten path, but it's definitely better than the Tenryuji garden, which we went to in the first place, because that one is more popular with tourists, but this one is much bigger, much more beautiful, and less people know about it. Of course, it costs 1,000 yen versus the 500 yen that we paid before, but 
Included in this price is a very nice matcha drink and some sweets. Definitely cannot be that because you're drinking the matcha in this picturesque, amazing setting in the middle of a park. Okochi Sonso Garden is often overlooked due to its location at the end of the bamboo forest. Formerly, the estate belonged to the Japanese actor Okochi Denjiro. It all began with a small Buddhist shrine on the premises. During his work, it's said that the actor would come here to meditate and gather his thoughts, and the rest of the estate was founded gradually outwards from this point. Located in the foothills of Mount Ogura, Okochi Villa includes a traditional home, a tea house, and Buddhist halls amidst carefully planned and cultivated Japanese-style gardens. Follow the standard route, which is clearly indicated with arrows, and you'll see all the important parts, including a viewpoint that offers amazing views across the whole city and a lovely little Shinto shrine. A touristic attraction that we were kind of lured into taking is the Saginaw Romantic train ride. Although being as crowded as it is and full of families with small children, there is very little romance in it. The charming old-fashioned train winds its way through the mountains along the Hoza River. The train drives at a slow pace, taking about 25 minutes to finally reach its stop in the rural Kamioka. Get tickets for seats that are even, for example, for A, for B, for C. We were sitting on the opposite side. We just had a little bit of views. The main views were for the people in the opposite part. And you don't need to take it both ways. Just take it one way. Believe me, it will be enough to like make beautiful photos and videos and uh, enjoy the views. We just finished our scenic ride on the Sagano Romantic uh, train and this is not it. <laughs> our train left like five minutes ago. So uh, was it scenic? Um, not really because now the trees are this hockey greenish brownish color so it was not very beautiful but I can see the potential. I think if you're here when the trees are blooming in spring or maybe uh, when there's this beautiful autumn foliage or after a snowfall in winter it could be really beautiful. We found it, it's this one. After a full day of sightseeing, we decided to treat ourselves with something special. Yakiniku is grilled meat cuisine that you have to prepare by yourself. This cuisine dates back to the 1920s when Korean immigrants introduced barbecue to Japan. We got two of the Pontocho cores for around 50 bucks each. So that would be 100 uh, US dollars for the food. So far the drink is uh, 1,800, that's like 15 bucks. The amount of alcohol that is here is 5%. <laughs> it's like sharing a bottle of beer for two people. It's, it tastes like soda, like sweet water. I feel like it will be an extremely expensive dinner. Maybe the most expensive in Japan so far. One of the first appetizers is this um, tartar dish with raw egg yolk and raw meat and some scallions. Hmm. It's not bad. It wouldn't be my first choice of an appetizer, but considering that I'm disgusted by egg yolks, the fact that I'm eating it, it's pretty good. Japanese people tend to eat a lot of raw foods. While sushi is the first thing that comes to mind, there are many more foods that are served raw, including beef, eggs, and even chicken. Compared to other countries, eggs and meat in Japan are considered to be much less contaminated by salmonella and therefore can be eaten without a worry.
The difference between yakiniku and other types of barbecue, including Korean barbecue, is that the meat is not marinated at all. The focus of the dish is on the natural flavor of the meat, so it requires very good quality ingredients and extra care while cooking. While some diners might add some seasoning, it's always kept to a minimum, like a pinch of salt, lemon juice, or a little bit of soy sauce. This is the most awaited um, part of the beef. This is the marble beef. I'm not sure if it's Wagyu or some Kobe beef, uh, but it's sizzling on the grill. It has so much fat. I'll just remove both of them because we don't know if they're done or not. We'll taste a little bit, and if it's not done, we'll put it back on the grill. Mmm, I think it's done. It's sprinkled with salt and pepper, and it's so soft, so juicy, it melts in your mouth because of the high content of fat of the marbling. We are starting our trip today with a stroll on Kiamachi Dori, which is a small pedestrian street along the river. It has some really nice picturesque views, uh, but it's on the shorter side. And we'll be walking into the old district to uh, visit a temple and a couple of other things. So here is the street. We are almost at the end, venturing in the old historical district of Kyoto. This is a matcha mochi, so it's a little bit sweet, a little bit um, um, bitter from the matcha, and very creamy. And uh, the um, strawberry adds this um, freshness and fruitiness. No visit to Kyoto is complete without discovering the Kiyomizutera Temple. This temple, dating back to the early 8th century, is renowned for its remarkable wooden stage which offers panoramic views of Kyoto and the mountains surrounding it. The stage is constructed entirely without the use of nails, showcasing the remarkable craftsmanship of Japanese artisans from centuries past. We finally reached Kiyomizudera and are entering the temple. The entrance is for 100 yen for adults. If you don't want to, you don't have to come here, but I think they have this picturesque, beautiful terrace that I definitely want to see and photograph. Mm -hmm. Today is a working day. It's um, also not some sort of holiday. It's not the touristic season yet. And uh, yet there are so many people here. It is crazy. Uh, I would highly recommend going to these touristic spots a little bit earlier in the morning if you can because now it's uh, 1.20 and uh, you know it's way too many people. From what I understand these are the relics of a famous warrior and uh, visitors are encouraged to lift his uh, regalia. Uh, Eugene, can you try to lift the spear? Uh, no, 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 that one, a uh, smaller one. Okay. And the shoes? Yeah, I have a strong man here. Kiyomizudera translates as pure water temple, so you can understand that water is deeply rooted in the temple's history. The connection is primarily attributed to the Otawa waterfall that flows through the temple grounds and the significance of pure water in Japanese culture and spirituality. The last stop in our visit to the temple is the spring that splits into three. 
It is believed that if you drink from the spring, it will bring you one of the three things, either longevity, luck and love, or success at school, depending on which stream you drink from. It is also considered a little bit greedy to drink from, uh, from all of them, so you have to choose one. Ah, you love a lot in the